big company in China that provides graphical interface software to everybody, like Huawei, which is a big telecom company. Um, there's all kinds of companies. Like if you watch this site, it's got sort of an animated rotating advertisement, and like tons of big name companies use this. So essentially what this means is the exploit developers just went out and got a commercial commonly used skin tool to build to make sure that their software was easy to use and visibly pleasing um, so you know the other thing from this that we gather is they used to be called QQQ and now they're called Anhe so they underwent a name change for some reason but we're not quite sure why um, and back to you. Another one is a very famous remote controller um, Grey Pigeon is a quick exit this one is a very famous one because um, uh, this is already produced at, at least 10 years ago, but there's a lot of variants and there's a lot of uh, source code for download. I, I mean the source code uh, is downloadable for you. I got a source code. Drop me an email, I got you, get your source code. The source code is, for, is uh, um, written in the Turbo Pascal, right? And Actually, for the for like this for this software, they, they do kinds of capture screenshots, there's the keystrokes, still user accounts, open microphone and camera, as execute any application, upload and download files, shut down surfaces, execute commands of controlled rest station, like the normal one. But it is suspended, <laughs> suspended by the vendor for the upgrade officially since March 2007. They put it like a legitimate software. Yeah, I respect them. <laughs> There actually, there's many variants right now. You could, download, you could find it in the Wikipedia. And I would like to show you some GUI, uh, the, the graphical user interface, and it generates server executable. You could generate your own server executable. However, you could see this part. You need to pay the money and get the user account, otherwise you can't generate it, okay? And also, it could say this one and this one. What's going on? UPX. Then you will make a guess. Yeah, this is to, to make a pack. This is not pack, but pack with UPX only. Okay. <laughs> Pwned. You know, so many, so many rectums here. Okay. Then you could try to play with your fingers. Okay. And get what you want. This is one, this is a quite a great Pigeon 209 super and super powerful. Pentinum version, <laughs> something like that. It's translation, something like that. Platinum version. And also this part. All right. So we got the um, we got some binaries for uh, Gray Pigeon, and we got the source code for Gray Pigeon. We started checking it out, and there's some kind of funny, interesting things in here. It has several main components. It's got the, the client exe that's the main program that runs what you saw a second ago. And when that's run, there's this um, operate ini that's generated, which I'll talk about in a second, and a few text files and a doc file, which turns out to be a, like a real official looking EULA, um, which I find hilarious. So uh, this is just an example that you know the doc file will have something like this, and then it's literally just accept the terms for registered users of Gray Pigeon. Um, they, they're really good at monetizing these tools, so they make sure that you pay before you can use them. Um, but yeah, it's just a standard EULA. And they have a disclaimer, um, you know, things like, you know, you can't use it for illegal purposes, but I'm not quite sure what other purposes there are for this. Um, Actually, uh, if you use it, um, they are not li liable for any loss. Yeah, they're not liable for losses if you use their tool. Um, yeah. Enterprise version. Uh, they actually have a change log, so you can track um, as they improve the tool over time. So you know you can see things that they redesign the client and the server programs to handle multitasking. Um, so you can really track their progress as they go along. And as he was saying, the tool is officially no longer supported, but tons of people have picked up the source and and keep adding features to it. And so it's it's out there and pretty prevalent. So there's another file that comes with this tool. It's one in, kind of buried down in one of the subdirectories, and it's called qqrui.dat. Uh, what's really interesting about this thing, we looked at the strings in this file, and we're not quite sure, like, we haven't finished reversing it to understand exactly what it uses this file for, but it's like this massive list of names of every company, college, like everything you can imagine. And then on, in, inside that list as well, there's a huge pile of like what looks like random numbers, 
but these are part numbers for like electronics or DSL modems and things like this. No idea what, what this file is for. Like we can't figure out where it inputs this or what it uses it, but it's there with the, the source distribution of this tool. All right, so now we're gonna sort of do a banquet of a uh, malware sample funny things that we found. Um, we're focusing on Chinese specific tools that we collected. Uh, we found different things like funny strings or weird, weird things that they do. So the first sample was actually um, given to us by a friend who was doing intrusion investigation and, um, at some commercial place. And the file was named SVO host, which is kind of funny because I think you know they're trying to copy the SVC host or whatever, but misspelled it. Um, so we just have some general information about the file here. Uh, it's not too big. Now, all the files that we analyze pretty much show up as not packed. Like the, we use um, a PID database in our own uh, tool to parse the database and do matches on um, opcode sequences. But they are packed. They're just packed with some custom packer that we don't know what it is. Um, but you can see here, like it has things like get tick count, um, net add connection, and actually ClamAV picked this up as uh, exploit MS0806. So I thought that was kind of funny. Um, so we took a look, uh, we basically took this thing apart, took a look at the strings, and there's all kinds of funny stuff in these strings because they, they tend to like to put like Easter eggs or hey, call me at this QQ address or whatever. And um, we found this word phantom spelled in leak speak and then over here there's an email address and a domain uh, and it says by Kyo and a few other things. So we went searching around, there's like a semi-famous hacker team, they call it over there, called the Phantom Security Team. And they actually had a blog for a while, but it looks like they're sort of inoperative. But this particular tool came from this team. I don't know if this team were the guys using it on the network that was broken into, but at least they built the tool. So another tool that we looked at um, was this one here. It's called NBSI. And I tried to run it in a VM, and it didn't, um, it wouldn't execute. Uh, well, it would execute, but nothing would happen. It would just sit there. It would use 100% of the the processor, and nothing would pop up on the screen. So I was like, all right, well, let me attach to it in Ollie. And even though there was no window popped up, in Ollie we could see the window name is actually uh, NBSI 3.0, and then they give us the URL of their hacker team site, which is darkteam.cn. So that's kind of cool. I mean, it's real easy to determine when you get one of these samples of these exploit generators or malware, um, to figure out what team made it, where did it come from. They just advertise. So we finally got this tool running <coughs> by sort of hiding it from a virtualization machine. And you can see the tool here. Um, Anthony helped us kind of decipher what these things are for. It's essentially like a SQL injection scanner tool. So you input your target URL up here on the top. I lost my cursor. but. Um, you input your target URL and sort of like what parameters are normal and then it's going to go through and try a bunch of different types of SQL injection. So just as a quick test we threw up a netcat listening locally on port 80 and um, told it to attack ourselves and made up some random thing to do and it came back and we can see you know some SQL injection attempt here. Um, it'll actually do a ton. Uh, and last year we worked on an intrusion at a a commercial company where their web logs were just full of like piles and piles and piles of uh, SQL injection attempts and we actually traced it back to this specific tool. So the injection attempts are done very particularly encoded in a certain way and have a certain format and you can trace it back to what tool created them. All right, so we found another interesting one um, called service.exe and our packer detector found that it was packed with armadillo and it looks like an armadillo pack um, binary. And this one does sort of your standard stuff, execs a file, creates a file, whatever, creates a process. Um, a lot of these have some rudimentary anti-analysis detection built into them, whether it's anti-debugging or VM detection. It's never like super, super sophisticated, but it's, it's always a little bit. So we did some API logging on this one and discovered that it creates a, a batch file. Now one of the big things we found in a lot of these tools is, at least the, the malware tools, uh, you know, previously we were talking about the exploit generators, now we're more into the malware side, um, is that they love batch files, like tons of batch files, and I'll show you some examples here in a minute. So this guy creates a batch file, um, it executes that batch file, then it creates another file that's the same name but it's in the exe, and then um, it creates a process here, and eventually it actually deletes the original file. So we went and took a look at the batch file that it makes to like get a feeling for what it's doing. 
um, it makes a directory uh, called RAR inside of, of WinRAR. And I'm not quite sure, I need to go back and see what it does if you don't have WinRAR installed, I did. Um, and then it creates an internet shortcut in there, which goes to this file here, RAR.LNN. And then it does a few other things, add a registry key. It's essentially setting up persistence and then starting this executable here. So we went and looked at that internet link and it's just a link to another executable that it creates in here. So something really funny is that it actually, this executable when you run it, it drops a DLL and throws it in Windows System 32 and the DLL name, DLL name is actually chicken. So if you remember at the beginning of the talk, Anthony was explaining um, in China they use the word chicken instead of the word Trojan. Uh, it's sort of a cultural difference. Um, chicken is like something you're going to slaughter and eat. So that's, you know, they use that for the victims that they've broken into. So it's kind of funny that this DLL that it injects is called chicken. Um, so the other batch file that it creates is startup.bat, it just shows it loading the chicken DLL, setting it up, um, and I already explained that. So, all right, the next sample that we took a look at is uh, HDSI. Um, and there wasn't really anything that interesting about this in the initial static analysis. It's basically got all your, your typical type of uh, imports that we normally see. Um, however, uh, ClamAV actually found this as an online game Trojan. And as Anthony was saying earlier, there's a lot of focus on stealing um, online game credentials. It's a huge industry. I think it's like $4 billion um, dollar industry where they steal game credentials, go into the game and steal all your items, your swords and gold and whatever, and then resell them. So there's like sweatshops full of guys breaking into computers and stealing game accounts. So here's another tool that we found, HDSI, um, and it's sort of a more advanced SQL injection tool. We can see here it does, we did basically the same analysis and it works the same way, although it creates a table with a particular name, I don't know how to say this name. Which one? This one right here. Ah, Jiaosu, like, like a, actually like a, a province at a, a, one of the China of the province, uh, I mean the name of province name actually. Okay, so I'm gonna flip over to um, my virtual machine here real quick. And so we have a huge collection of a uh, variety of these things, but I can show you some of the stuff that we found. So the, An the Anhe executables are pretty recognizable. They all pretty much have this globe icon associated with them. Um, different ones do things like use the red hat icon or whatever. Um, these NBSI SQL injection guys use this icon. So the big deal is that there's a lot of recognizable things about the tools that they use uh, that can help you determine like signature of these tools, so to speak. Um, there were several tools from Anhe that focused specifically on Kaspersky you know, Kaspersky Evasion, there's actually a video on how to use their tools, like a 30 minute tutorial video. It's, it's pretty well done actually. Um, so we have those binaries here. Uh, if you take a look at how these things work, for example, you pop this guy open and you put in what you want your payload to be, you know, whatever URL you want it to go talk out to, yeah, whatever your dropper is, then you hit go and it's essentially going to generate these big files. Uh, they'll be like a, a graphic. Here's that skin DLL I was talking about earlier. Um, let me open this up real quick. All right, so it's basically ready-made client-side exploits, one click, and then you can see the recognizable heap spray signature here that we've been talking about. Um, so there's just a ton of tools. It's, it's amazing how prolific these guys are. Uh, we, there's another tool called um, Ghost that we have the source code to. It's pretty interesting. And we're going to put a lot of this information up on the Attack Research website. Um, Anthony wants to talk about Little Mouse. Yep. Uh, actually, this slide is prepared when I cannot have a, uh, a sleep, sleepless night, night at Las Les Vegas because uh, I produce it in a few hours then. Because this is a very famous one, um, it's a downloader called Little, Little Mouse. Actually, it is from, captured from the Hacker Forum in July 2009. And the packer is like um, NSPack version 3.7. And 
Also, it could be like um, there's a Chinese name here. 